Hello and welcome to my weekly video blog and today I'm going to be talking about B12 deficiency in the perimenopause and menopause and what you need to know about it. If you like my tips and advice then please subscribe and remember to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of all my new videos. Now it's very common to get nutritional deficiencies in the perimenopause and menopause. A lot of it is to do with all the physical changes, all the emotional and hormonal changes that are going on. But there are certain nutrients that are really essential for our well-being and our health. And one of them is vitamin B12. And so today I'm going to talk about how this can happen, what you can do to help yourself and what symptoms this is linked to. And I think you'll probably get quite a surprise. So vitamin B12 is a, it's what's called a water soluble vitamin, which is crucial for various body functions. It's one of the eight B vitamins. So there's a combination of B vitamins that are all essential for the proper functioning of the nervous system, for um, red blood cell production, for DNA synthesis, for energy metabolism, and also various um, psychological processes in the body. So what can affect vitamin B12 absorption? So the first one is age. The problem is as we get older, our ability to absorb B12 from food decreases so the deficiency of B12 risk increases. It can be digestive changes and so many um, women going through the perimenopause and menopause find they get digestive problems. And in vitamin B12 absorption, one of the important things is, is to have enough stomach acid. So if your production of stomach acid decreases, then your absorption of B12 is going to decrease and that is going to give you a, a risk of vitamin B deficiency. We also know that the gut flora, so the balance of friendly bacteria in the gut, can also have an impact on vitamin B12 too. It can be dietary factors. So if you're vegetarian or vegan, you're not going to get good sources of B12 um, from meat. So that's a really important one. So if you're in this category, it's really important to understand what can happen with B12 um, deficiency here. It can be excessive alcohol. It can be some medications as well. And I'll talk about one particular class of medications at, at the end of this talk. So the signs and the symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency is fatigue and general weakness. So you just feel that you're so tired all the time. You can't get enough, get up and go. And it seems to be a kind of constant feeling. So vitamin B12 is crucial for energy production. So if you're low in B12, then fatigue and general weakness is going to be one of the, the, the main symptoms. It can be shortness of breath and dizziness. And this can be due to the, the decrease of, of um, red blood cells because vitamin B12, one of the other things it does is to help with um, the, the production of red blood cells or red blood cells carry oxygen to all parts of the body. So if you're low in B12, if your red blood cell count is low, then you're, um, you can end up with lack of oxygen. So that's going to be the shortness of breath, um, the dizziness. Um, it could also be things like um, brain function too, which I'll talk about uh, again. It can be tingling and numbness. So B12 is essential for nerve function. So if you're low in B12, you're going to get nerve tingling, you're going to get numbness, pins and needles, and very often it's the, in, in the hands and the feet are the main areas that, that you will feel this. It could be due to nerve damage can cause difficulty in walking, so you may find you're not walking as well, your posture has changed, you're getting a lot of pain in, in the, the legs when you're walking, and it can also affect your balance as well. Um, 
It can be cognitive issues, as I mentioned before. So again, if you're not getting those loads of blood cells and oxygen to the brain, you're going to have the memory loss, you're going to have the brain fog, you're going to have confusion and your concentration can decrease uh, as well. Another aspect of it is mood changes. So low B12 or low B12 deficiency can cause symptoms such as depression, irritability, mood changes, and it can contribute to anxiety uh, as well. And the other main symptom of B12 deficiency is vision changes. So it can cause vision disturbances, or it could actually lead to um, optic nerve damage as well. So again, this is a, a really important one. So um, the problem here is all those symptoms that I've just mentioned, don't they sound just like menopause ones? And what can happen in the menopause? So many people don't, they don't know much about B12 deficiency. So all of these symptoms can then be blamed on the menopause. You take menopause remedies, you might end up going on HRT, you might do other things to help with hormonal balance and you find that nothing helps and that's because the symptoms may be associated with vitamin B12 deficiency rather than the hormonal changes in the perimenopause and the menopause. So it's really important and I always advise when you start to get any of these symptoms in any combination is that you go and ask your doctor to get your vitamin B12 levels checked. It's so easy to remedy um, and it can make a difference really, really quickly. If you are deficient, it's more than likely that you'll end up having to get regular injections. But if you're maybe on the borderline or you just want to try and do something to help yourself to start with, then the things that you really need to look at is um, obviously diet. So um, for those of you who eat meat, really good quality um, red meat, things like liver as well is, is very high in B12. Um, for those of you that are vegetarian or vegan, it's really important to supplement because there are very few vegetables and things like that that will have enough vitamin B12 in them to make a difference for you. The other thing that you can do is you can get a vitamin B sublingual spray. You can also get what's called a vitamin B complex. I tend to recommend the complex because the B vitamins tend to work in harmony with each other. So rather than taking a high dose of one single one on its own, it's better to take a good combination. And your local health food shop um, or pharmacy should be able to advise you on a, a good quality product that's high enough. The recommended daily allowance at the minute in the UK is about 2.4 micrograms, but these things do change over time. So uh, always keep uh, an, an eye on that. Now, one of the things I mentioned before was certain medications. So many women tell me that going through the menopause, they end up with gastric leak, gastric reflux or indigestion. So they go to the doctors and they get prescribed medications that bring down stomach acid. These medications, if they are taken long enough, quite a few of them on their side effect list do mention vitamin B12 deficiency. So if you're on any of these medications and you've been on them for more than a few months, check the patient information leaflet and also have a chat to your pharmacist. Maybe ask them if, if you can um, come in for, if they do um, B12 tests as well, just to make sure that the medication is not part of the problem for you. So I hope you find this one helpful. It's a quite a big factor. I'm finding now as time goes on that more and more women are being diagnosed with vitamin B12 deficiency in the, in the perimenopause and, and menopause. So just be aware of this one. Don't always blame the menopause for all your symptoms because as we've just seen today, it might not be. So if any of you have had experience of vitamin B12 deficiency, what happened? What symptoms did you get? What have you done to remedy it? What tips do you have for everyone else out there? Because you know, as always, 
I love to read your stories. Um, have a good week and I'll see you soon.